Okay, I'm going to go over uh, number two. Number two, you're trying to find the uh, angle and the area of the sector. So remember that the arc length is equal to r times theta. So we solve for theta, theta is equal to the arc length over r. So in this case, the arc length is uh, 0 0.5, which is just 1 half over 3. So theta here is 1 sixth radians. And now to find the area of the sector, there's a formula, one-half r squared theta. So one-half r, in this case, is three. So three squared is nine. And my theta is one-sixth. So this becomes area is equal to nine over 12, which is three-fourths. So my area here is 0.75 or 3 fourths uh, meters squared. Okay. Now for number four. Now number four is asking for the linear speed of an object moving. So if they're asking for linear speed, we need to know the relation that the linear speed is linear speed is uh, the radius of a circle times the angular speed. So remember, this is angular speed. And the V here stands for linear speed. So I know it's going at 480 revolutions per minute. Um, but whenever we want to uh, use this relation, our angular speed has to be in radians. So we're going to uh, use the conversion that in one revolution in a circle goes through 2 pi radians. And 480 times 2 pi is 960 pi radians per minute. However, the question, uh, now to find the linear speed, we need to multiply our angular speed times our radius. Now the radius in this question is 13 inches because the diameter is 26. So V is equal to 13 inches times uh, 960 pi radians per minute. They do want it in miles per hour though. So I have to convert this into miles per hour. There is one foot uh, has 12 inches. And there are 5,280 feet in one mile. And then I have to convert to hours too. So here there are 60 minutes in one hour. And so my minutes cancel, the feet cancel, the inches cancel over here. Uh, the radians is not that uh, big of a deal with, uh, we don't really include that with the units. So after I work this out, remember, I multiply by everything on the top, divide by everything on the bottom uh, from your chemistry class. And so the answer here is 11.8 pi miles per hour. However, since it's a real-world scenario, we don't leave it as 11.8. This is going to be 37, about 37.1 miles per hour. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip 5 because 5, you just have to know your unit circle. I'm not going to go through all of these. However, number 6, let's go over number 6. <clears throat> now... Number six is a composition of functions. We are composing um, the cosecant and the cosine. So for number six, letter A, uh, what is f of g? So remember, we take the g function and put it in f. So it's the cosine of the cosecant of x. Okay. Now, so what that means is the cosecant is really uh, 1 over the sine. So this is cosine over, co, uh, over sine. Okay. 
Now, um, because there needs to be an argument here, this will be cosine x. So cosine over sine is the cotangent. So that is the answer for the composition. The cosine times the cosecant is really just the cosine over the sine. There should be an x here. Okay. So that is letter A. Letter B is asking what is the domain and range? Well, remember, cotangent is really cosine over sine. So the domain for a cotangent graph is all real numbers except when sine is 0. Sine is 0 at the x-axis. So it's at 0, pi, 2, pi, 3, pi, 4, pi. So except multiples of pi. So this will be a good time to review your domain and range for all of your trig functions. It was in the properties of trig functions lesson. Now B, since it's cotangent, uh, the range is all real numbers. And you remember that when we, when we graph the cotangent, the range was all real numbers. Now let's go and do number seven. <clears throat> so number seven they say cosine theta is equal to negative one-fourth now remember cosine uh, we could treat this as x and we could treat this as r and to find y remember that in a the equation of a circle centered at the origin x squared plus y squared equals r squared so here, x equals negative 1, and r is equal to 4. So this is negative 1 squared plus y squared is equal to uh, 4 squared. So this is 1 plus y squared is equal to 16. Subtract 1, and y squared is equal to 15. And then so in this case, y is equal to plus or minus root 15. However, in this question, you are uh, tangent is greater than 0. So if cosine is negative, you're either in quadrant 2 or 3. But since you have an additional stipulation of tangent is greater than 0, tangent is positive, and you look at quadrants 2 and 3, tangent is positive in quadrant 3. So that means we are in quadrant 3. So we are going to use, since y represents the sine, we are going to use our negative value here since we are in quadrant 3. Remember, in quadrant 3, y is negative. So y is equal to negative root 15. So now we just have to find all of the rest of our functions. Sine is y over r. So sine theta is equal to negative root 15 over 4. <clears throat> tangent is y over x so y is negative root 15 x is negative 1 so negative root 15 over negative 1 equals positive root 15 the cosecant is uh, r over y or you could just think about it as the reciprocal of sine. Remember, sine and cosecant are reciprocals. So it's 4 over negative root 15. You should rationalize all radicals if it's in the denominator. So I multiply top and bottom by root 15. And so my cosecant is negative 4 root 15 over 15. My secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So um, my cosine is negative 1 over 4. So my secant is negative 4. And then my cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So here it will be 1 over root 15. 
when I multiply top and bottom by root 15, and uh, this is root 15 over 15. And that's the cotangent. So number 8 is done in the same exact way. So I'm going to erase this. So number 8, cosecant theta is equal to 3. Now cosecant is really r over y. So here r is 3, y is 1, because we could make this 3 over 1. So to do this, uh, I use x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So I have x squared plus 1 squared equals 3 squared, which is 9. So x squared plus 1 equals 9. Uh, subtra and I get x squared is equal to 8. And so x is equal to plus or minus 2 root 2. So we take the square root of both sides. Now, uh, for number 8, uh, cosecant is positive. So that means, since this is the uh, reciprocal of sine, uh, sine is positive. So that means I'm either in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. Uh, but since cotangent is negative, uh, cotangent is negative in quadrant 2. So I am in quadrant 2, so that means I'm going to use my negative value because x is negative in quadrant 2. So x is equal to negative 2 root 2. And now we just go ahead and do uh, what we're used to. So sine is the reciprocal of cosecant. So I have cosecant is 3, so sine is 1 over 3. Cosine is x over r, so x is negative 2 root 2, r is 3. Tangent is y over r, no, sorry. Tangent is y over x, so tangent is 1 over negative 2 root 2. I rationalize it by multiplying the top and bottom by root 2. And I get negative root 2 over 4. Um, cosecant is already there. So secant is the r over x. Or the reciprocal of cosine. Whichever way you want to think about this. So I have 3 over negative 2 root 2. Multiply the top and bottom by root 2 to rationalize. And I get my secant is equal to negative 3 root 2 over 4. And then cotangent is uh, x over y. So it's negative 2 root 2 over 1. So cotangent is equal to negative 2 root 2. Since negative 2 root 2 over 1 is just negative 2 root 2. So that's number 8 for you. So um, number 9. Number 9 is the one where we subtract <clears throat> where it's all the periods. So for 9, for letter A, it's cosine of 450. Cosine of 450 is the same thing as 450 minus 360. So 450 minus 360 is 90. So this is the same thing as cosine. So what I do here is I do 450 minus 360 since one revolution is 360. This is equal to 90. So this cosine of 450 is the same thing as cosine of 90 because it's periodic by 2 pi. And the cosine of 90 is Zero. Letter B, sine of 870. Well, uh, since we're doing multiples of 360, 360 uh, after 360 is 720. So I could do 870 minus 720, and I get that this is 150. So I know the sine of 150. Remember, this is a 30 degree angle in quadrant two. So the sine of 150 is one half. Letter C, the tan of 585. 
So the 10 of 585, what I do is I do 585 minus 360. And this is uh, 225. So the 10 of 225, uh, 225 is a quadrant 3, 45 degree angle. And that is uh, 1. Okay. Now, uh, remember how I showed you how to do D through I? So for letter D, I have the cosine of 23 pi over 6. So remember that uh, if I have it with a denominator of 6, one revolution is 12 pi over 6. Because 12 pi over 6 simplifies to 2 pi. So what I could do is I subtract 12 pi. Uh, if I do multiples of 12 pi over 6, those are the revolutions. So the next one after 12 pi is 24 pi over 6. But I go over that. So I subtract 12 pi from 23 pi over 6. And what I get is I get that um, is 11 pi over 6. So cosine of 23 pi over 6 is the same thing as cosine of 11 pi over 6. And remember, 11 pi over 6 is your uh, 30 degree angle that's right here. So the cosine of 11 pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Uh, letter E, a sine of 19 pi over 3. Now, Remember, if I have it over 3, uh, one revolution is 6 pi over 3. Now, 6 times 3 is 18. So 18 pi over 3 is 3 revolutions. So if I subtract 19 pi from, uh, if I subtract 18 pi from 19, I just get pi over 3. And so 19 pi over 3 is the same thing as pi over 3 by the periodic uh, functions. So the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, knowing your unit circle. Okay. Now letter F is the same process. So what I'm going to do here is I have tan of 27 pi over 4. Now, if it's over 4, that means one revolution is 8 pi over 4. Um, if I do multiples of 8, 8, 16, 24. So 24 pi over 4 is 3 revolutions. What I can do is I can do 27 pi over 4 minus 20... Um, sorry, 24 pi over 4. Um, yeah, three revolutions. And so I end up with 3 pi over 4. So tan of 27 pi over 4 is the same thing as tan of 3 pi over 4, which is negative 1. Now, I'm going to skip to letter I, because G and H are done the same thing, sine and cosine. But now, just for letter I, I'm going to kind of show you that you have to do a little more here. If I have 10 of 11 pi over 3, one revolution is 6 pi over 3. Uh, if I do it, then one more revolution, it's 12 pi over 3, which I'm over this. So what I need to do is 11 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3 is equal to 5 pi over 3. And remember, if you are at 5 pi over 3, you are in quadrant 4. You are a quadrant 4, 60 degree angle. Okay? So the tan is sine over cosine. So your sine uh, for your 60 degree angle in quadrant 4 is um, root 3 over 2. But since you're in quadrant 4, it's negative. And the cosine is 1 half, so it's just sine over cosine, negative root 3 over 2 over 1 half, 
which is just negative root 3. Okay, that's letter I. I skip G and H. Okay, so for number 10, remember that you have to know these um, Pythagorean identities. So you have to know sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. But you also have to know how to get the other two. So from this, you could get one by dividing everything by sine squared. And this becomes one. This becomes cotangent squared. And this becomes cosecant squared. And if you do it the second time, where you divide everything by cosine squared, you get tangent squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. Okay, So you don't have to memorize these. You have to know how to get from here to the other ones. But now we're going to use these three and the other trig properties to solve the rest of them. So 10a, I have sine squared 20 plus cosine squared 20. Now it doesn't matter what the angle is here. If I have sine squared plus cosine squared at the same angle, a is just 1. Letter b, 1 minus cosine squared theta. Well, if I look at my sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, if I subtract cosine squared from both sides, I get 1 minus cosine squared on the right. Right? So you have to think about it like this. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. If I subtract cosine squared from both sides, I get sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. So 1 minus cosine squared theta is sine squared theta. That's your answer for B. Okay. Now, for letter C, C is tangent squared 18 degrees plus 1. Well, if I look here, tangent squared plus 1 is equal to secant squared. So tangent squ squared of 18 plus 1 is equal to secant squared of 18 degrees. Letter D is cosecant squared minus the cotangent squared. If I look at this Pythagorean identity that relates cotangent and cosecant, if I subtract cotangent from both sides, cosecant minus cotangent is just equal to 1. <clears throat> now, letter E um, involves some fraction manipulation. So for letter E, I have sine x plus cotangent x cosine x cotangent is the same thing as cosine over sine, cosine. And then now I just replace cotangent with cosine over sine. I'm going to combine them into one fraction with a sine squared. So if I have sine squared, uh, sorry, if I have sine x on the bottom, not sine squared, uh, the common denominator is sine x. This one is missing a sine x, so this becomes a sine squared x. And here I have cosine x times cosine x is cosine squared x. But now I remember sine squared x plus cosine squared x is 1 over sine x. And 1 over sine x is just equal to cosecant x. Okay. Letter f is done the same way, and we've actually done it in class. So I am going to skip that and now move on to number 11. Number 11 is the graphing. Now, you have to remember how these parent graphs look like. So, the tangent graph, remember it has asymptotes at pi over 2. Because remember, 
remember that um, tangent is y over x and x is undefined, uh, sorry, cosine is undefined at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 because x is 0. And now remember your tangent graph goes like this. And so the three points that I'm really looking for are pi over 4, 1, 0, 0. And you have to give me negative pi over 4, negative 1. And it will continue because it's periodic. So your cotangent graph has uh, asymptotes at 0, at pi, at 2 pi. So this is where you have an asymptote. You have an asymptote at pi. You have an asymptote at negative pi, um, and so on. Now, the way this is graphed is uh, at pi over 4, you're still at 1. Because remember, cotangent is cosine over sine. So pi over 4, you're at 1. And at 3 pi over 4, you're at negative 1. So it kind of looks like the tangent graph. But now you're at pi over 4, 1, and negative uh, 3 pi over 4, negative 1. So the first question is asking, y is equal to 2 tan x plus 2. So you're going to take your tangent graph, and you are going to multiply it by 2, the y values, and then move it up 2. So there's a transformation vertical stretch of 2, and you're going to add 2. So this is what the graph looks like. I still have asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and at pi over 2. But now let's see how these uh, points get changed. So the point pi over 4, 1. So remember, this is a vertical stretch of 2. And then I add 2 because of the vertical shift. 1 times 2 is 2 plus 2 is 4. So now this point is at pi over 4, 4. Right. If I'm at 0, 0, 0 times 2 is 0, but I add 2 to it, so now this is 0, 2. And if I'm at negative pi over 4, negative 1, negative 1 times uh, 2 is negative 2, and I add 2, and I'll be at 0. Okay. So your graph looks like that. Uh, and you need to label these points. So pi over 4, 4, 0, 2, negative pi over 4, 0. Now, letter B, I'm taking my cotangent graph, and there is, uh, letter B is y is equal to cotangent 4x. Now, this is a vertical compression, I'm sorry, horizontal compression by 4 since it's just uh, with the x. So that means every x value I am dividing by 4. And that's the only thing that's happening here. So my cotangent graph looks the same. Okay. But now my asymptotes, instead of pi, I divide that by 4. This asymptote is at pi over 4. This asymptote is at negative pi over 4. Now, pi over 4, 1, it's only my x value that will get compressed. So pi over 4 divided by 4 is pi over 16. Okay. Um, oh, you should label this point as 1, 0. So in the cotangent graph, 1 divided by 4, oh, sorry, pi over 2, 0. So pi over 2 divided by 4 is now pi over 8. So it's going to go through pi over 8. And then pi over 4 divided by 4 is pi over 16. So this point is at pi over 16, 1. And my cotangent graph, sorry.
looks like that. We're at pi over 8, I'm at 0. Pi over 16, I'm at 1. And at uh, 3 pi over 16, I'm at negative 1. So, letter C, what I'm doing is I am taking my cotangent graph, and there's a vertical um, compression of one half, and then I'm moving it down one. But remember, all I have to do is take my y values multiply by one half, subtract one. So in my cotangent graph, my asymptotes will stay exactly as they are. They, are. they do not get moved in this case. So this is pi. This is negative pi. So for example, pi over four, one. One times one half is one half. And I subtract one from that. And so I'm at negative one half. Okay. So this is pi over four, negative one. If I take pi over two, zero, zero times one half is zero. Oh, sorry. This is minus one half, not minus one. So the next point. I take 0, multiply it by 1 half, it's 0, and I move it down 1, that's minus 1. So this next point is at pi over 2, negative 1. And then this last point at 3 pi over 4, negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 half is negative 1 half, and I subtract 1 from that, and now I'm at negative 3 halves. So um, I'm right here, uh, 3 pi over 4 negative 3 halves, and I go ahead and graph a function. So that should be your cotangent graph. Now, last one, letter D. Y is equal to tangent pi over 6x.